Some of you watch college basketball probably, let's say, in the <sighs> late 2000s. Uh, there was a couple of stars in the college basketball realm that were absolutely great, but they went to the NBA and didn't pan out as well. One of them was Michael Beasley, who went to Kansas State University for one year now. He went there for one year and was absolutely electrifying as a freshman there before taking off to the NBA. Um, while in college, he was a um, National Freshman of the Year, consensus first team All-American in 2008, uh, Pete Newell Big Man Award in 2008, Big 12 Player of the Year, first team all Big 12, he was the NCAA rebounding leader in 2008. He was also McDonald's All-American Gang MVP in 2007 for the class of 06 or 07, I think it might have been. Uh, he was drafted by the Miami Heat in 2008. The NBA draft in 2008, first round, second overall pick. He was supposed to be big. I mean, big, absolutely big. Um, in college, let me go back to his college. This is how great he was. This is why he was considered one of the most dominant players in college basketball during the time. He averaged 26 points, third in the nation. Nation leading 12.4 rebounds. Uh, was the most by a Big 12 player in any season. He had 866 total points, 408 rebounds, ranked third and second among freshmen in NCAA history. He also led the nation in double doubles. 28 40 point games, three, three 40 point games, 30 point games, um, 10 rebound, 10 rebound games, 20, uh, which was 13, and 20.10 rebound games is 22. Wow. Led nation in double doubles, 28 40 point games, three, 30 point. 10 rebound games, 13, 20 point, 10, 20. That's amazing. His 28 double doubles broke the freshman double record previously held by Carmelo Anthony, who had 22 double doubles in his only season at Syracuse in 2002-2003. Um, he scored a Big 12 record, 44 points, and a loss against Baylor as well. Um, this mark has been since matched by other players since then. He averaged a season shooting 53% from the field as well. And shooting from the three, 39.5% from the field. Um, he holds 30 Kansas State records. All amazing. This so keeps going on and on. But that did not translate to the NBA because the desire we get to the NBA is always different. Things always change. Um, he played for the Miami Heat for two years, then went to Minnesota for two years, then went for the Phoenix Suns for a year, then went back to Miami. Shanghai Sharks, back to Miami for a year, back to China, the Rockets, my Bucks, the Knicks, then the Lakers, and finished his career out in China, where he didn't win a championship over there and foreign MVP as well, and a couple of All-Stars. He was also an NBA rookie first team. Uh, with career averages, uh, let's see here, they ain't gonna tell me. His career averaged 12.4 points a game, 4.7 rebounds. So, his career didn't pan out as well as it should. I think everybody thought he was gonna be the next big, uh, best thing. I think he was on the same AU team as Kevin Durant or something like that as well. But, Michael Beasley has pretty much been out of the league as of now due to, I think, some personal uh, situations he had to de deal with. I'm not going to go too much into that that's his business. But I want to give a big shout out to Two Raw for breaking this earlier. But I'm going to go in a different route with this. So I want to bring some other points up as well. Now, originally. It was said, and this was said actually dated July 17, 2018. In this article, it says Michael Beasley used to regularly beat LeBron in one on one and he practices when it was teammates for the Miami Heat in one of his stints. 
think it could have been the second one. Um, in this article, it says LeBron James is still one of the best players in the world. <laughs> and during this time with the Miami Heat, there was no question that he was the best player in the world. <laughs> Despite being the best. Yeah. There was one surprising player LeBron couldn't seem to beat in practice. According to former Miami Heat beat writer Tom Harborstraw on a back-to-back podcast back in 2008, it could have been. Um, Har- Harborstall said Michael Beasley and James would play one-on-one a lot and Beasley would always seem to get the best of the king. It's shocking to learn that James would lose to anyone on one-on-one but Beasley isn't totally a crazy choice. Um, although Dwayne Wade or Chris Bosh would likely be the first guesses, Beasley always has always had the individual talent as I just reverted with his college career has been a good one-on-one player in his career, but at times he struggled with the team concept. Which is also a lot of NBA players. Uh, some people, are, they look good playing one-on-one. But when it comes to the team, they can't function on the team. They don't like playing as a team or don't understand the team concept. Uh, this is a lot of players, and this was one of BC's, I guess, one of his issues why he really didn't last that long. Now... He was talented, but there's always different talents. It just takes more than just getting on the court just because you got skills. It takes a lot to go into that type of basketball. But moving on, it could be the reason why Beasley still hasn't been signed yet. This is, like I said, dated back in 2018. Uh, He since then played with a couple teams after that, including the Lakers. His stats were impressive last year with the New York Knicks, but evidently they didn't think he gave enough Good enough team support and they won't be being there. Yeah, sorry. There's a lot of bees in that sentence. And they won't be bringing him back this summer. Um, if Beasley can find a team, yada, yada, yada. That's pretty much the end of the article. Uh, so, you know what? I can believe it. As much as some people are not good on the team concept, they also are not good some players are not good playing one-on-one and that may be lebron james we all know lebron james is like a bowling ball that's his bag the crossovers are limited the shots are limited especially from three you can't really bowling ball your way in a one-on-one game one-on-one game that much because it's only you and the other person eventually that other person is going to figure how you play out and i bet Michael Beasley yeah Michael Beasley not, may not have been the absolute stud as people hope but I bet you Michael Beasley realized what LeBron can do and what he can't do and he exploited what he can't do which is not that hard to figure out and I bet you there's a bunch of other NBA players that can probably do it <laughs> I bet you Kevin Durant can be him in one on one I bet you there's a whole bunch of players that can be him in one on one now I say all of this to say that only a couple weeks ago, maybe it could have been a couple months ago, I made a video on a one on on a one if Kobe and LeBron play one on one, and I pick Kobe to win, and the, you know the Latards screeched at that one, and they start going reverting back to how these two playing against each other on a team concept. We're talking about one on one concept. We're not talking about a team, and I don't even brought points. When it comes to team between these two, they just say, oh, LeBron is 16-6 against Kobe. But they forget what happened during those times. Half of those times, LeBron had the better team because he was in Miami. But anyways, and also the Kobe was getting older. But anyways, um, I'm taking Kobe to win that one-on-one game. And no doubt me, I would take Jordan to play that one-on-one game. But they also said that Dwayne Wade... Um, <laughs> beat him too and I believe Dwayne Wade can do it also LeBron is not as good as you guys think he is Latards please open your eyes stop being blind to what's going on but also I want to leave you with these two clips right here you will know when you win in one on one in the team I LeBron <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. One on one is that's that's easy for me. You know, that's 
it's like the breakfast. playing one on one is you know that's how I grew up playing. Yeah. Yeah, that's like my thing. You know, LeBron is you know, it's more like a Magic Johnson would say. He's you know, a great passer. He plays you know, all around the game. I think at the core of me, I'm a one on one player. That's I do that in my sleep. <laughs> if I was in my prime, who would I want to play one on one with? Um, that list is very long. Start off with Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Kobe Bryant in his prime, LeBron in his prime, D Wade in his prime, Melo. That's a good start. Yeah. I don't think I lose. Other than Kobe Bryant because he steals all my moves.